Welcome to this week's end of day's update coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had such a great time this last weekend in Grand Junction, Colorado. We were at Faith Heights Church. Man, the people were hungry, so had so much fun. If you're in the Alabama area this next weekend, we'll be at Grace Family Church, starting off in Birmingham on Friday night at John Hawkins uh, Boulevard at the Embassy Suites. And then this the Sunday, we'll be over in Jasper, Alabama, at the home of the church there. So we'll have a great time. Come out. There's something about being there live is great. The Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some would do, especially as you see the day approaching. So that's what the end of day's update is all about, is looking at what's happening that shows us literally the, how close we are and how things are happening and approaching the coming of the Lord. It's so blatant now. I hear people say, boy, I wish I could have lived in Bible days. You're living when verses are coming to pass right in front of your eyes. I mean, things that Ezekiel prophesied 2,700 years ago are coming to pass right now. So we're blessed. We'll look back at this time and go, how could it have been this way? Uh, and the Lord really wants us to understand times. I hear people say, why do you want to get into end times? No, it, I've never seen a runner not know what the finish line looks like. Wouldn't that be weird? You train, 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 and then you go, oh, what is that? No, it's the finish line. So we're looking at things that point to uh, the, the second coming of the Lord, but the Ezekiel 38 war happens right after the rapture. So if we can see the nations getting ready for that, we can tell we're very close. And the Lord warned us to know, just like He told the crowd. He never rebuked the crowd except for one time. He rebuked the Pharisees over and over over and over again. But the crowd, he said, hey, you can tell what the weather's going to be, but you don't know your hour, your visitation. So he wants us to know. And he said in Luke that, that, that the Israel would be our timepiece. So why do you wear a watch? So you'll be where you're supposed to be on time. So God's got things happening right now so fast, so much going on that you could spend almost an hour going through all the details of what's happening. So it's just wonderful to see it in front of our eyes. How wild. So let's go back to what started happening on Monday, then we'll back up, then we'll come forward. On Monday night, Israel Israel started their ground incursion into southern Lebanon. They want to push Lebanon back. They went after all these missile batteries. Of course, all these missile launchers were like in schools and hospitals uh, and ambulances. They went after those. They're wanting to push them back so that Israeli citizens can actually come and live in their homes again on the northern part of that Galilee. They've been uh, out of their houses since October 7th now because of all the threats from Hezbollah. So uh, that's happening huge. I mean, one thing after another with that is massive. Hard to go into all the detail about uh, uh, a ground uh, attack. But really, we'll back up to Nasrallah. Remember last week, Nasrallah was, was killed. Man, what a bizarre deal. Even along with him was one of the... Uh, one of the uh, generals in the Revolutionary Guard. The wild thing about that was is Israel got an Iranian man to shake hands with Nasrallah. As he shook hands with him, he marked his hand with something so they knew where Nasrallah was the whole time. When Benjamin Netanyahu went to New York to go to the UN, uh, I guess Hezbollah thought, well, he's safe, it'll be okay. But he was down under the ground in one of the basements. So they, they got him taken out. Man, looking at what Israel had to do for that kind of gives you a picture of what they can do for the nuclear things that are so below the ground when you have these bunker buster bombs. I mean, there was about eight F-15s that came in, dropped those bunker buster bombs. I think uh, the New York Times says there was 18 of those that they dropped. And the succession, how they had to drop them, one every two seconds, flawless precision to blow that building up to get rid of Nasrallah. So, I mean, everybody's freaking out over that, just like they freaked out a few days earlier when uh, Hezbollah's pagers started blowing up and their phones started blowing up. So, man, Israel's got some radical things to protect themselves. So with all of that, you have the UN Secretary General Guterres. He said, you know what? He didn't condemn Iran's attack. He didn't condemn Hamas's attack. And then Israel's guy came out and said, okay, you can't come to our land. We will not allow you to land here. Well, he changed his mind on the Iranian attack. So it's just weird to see world leaders uh, appalled. The U.S. State Department and the U.N. were appalled at Israel defending itself. How bizarre is that? So yesterday, what an interesting time that was on regular TV. Uh, they cut in on NBC. I watched it. It was... Um, uh, right there, probably from about 10.30 to about 12.30, you could see the missiles coming from Iran. They said there was 180 missiles. It seemed like a lot more than that. But man, seeing the Iron Dome put in action, you know, Israel has three different levels of the Iron Dome. You have David Slingshot and you have the Arrow uh, defense system. So watching that, a bullet shooting a bullet, what an amazing thing. Not There was only three Israelis that even got injured, and the only person that got killed was a Palestinian uh, from Gaza. So... Uh, Khomeini in Iran is absolutely crazy. So doing that, attacking Israel, 
you had Iran firing missiles from Iraq uh, into other parts of Iraq where our bases were. So our soldiers got attacked again, and America really hasn't done anything about that. This is about the uh, third or fourth time that's happened. But then you had Israel do an airstrike into Damascus. They went to another factory. People go, what's Israel doing? Well, it was a chemical weapons factory. It was, they were making sarin gas there. So Israel's having to, to go out of its way because it's completely surrounded. You had some of the United States destroyers stop some of the missiles that were coming down from Iran. The deal about the missiles coming down from Iran were they're coming, they make it in 11 to 12 minutes. That's how fast they're getting there. So the Israelis have not much time to take shelter. So boy, the rage went off all over, all over Israel. So it's, it's, people keep you know, texting me and calling me, what's getting ready to happen? What's getting ready to happen? Well, you had Rosh Hashanah, a Feast of Trumpets, start today. And with that, you had the, an, a solar eclipse called the Ring of Fire that happened today. It started exactly when the Feast of Trumpets started in Israel. So we've got about two days for the Feast of Trumpets. And, you know, we, Jesus fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and then Pentecost happened. The next feast to be fulfilled on the calendar is Feast of Trumpets. So we could have the rapture on the Feast of Trumpets. I don't believe it's today or tomorrow, but I'm ready if it is. I'm all in. So how blessed are we, though, to watch it unfold right in front of our eyes? You've got things in the heavens. You have flood. The flood this last week in America was so horrific from the hurricane. And there were floods in Nepal. There was a typhoon in some other areas. So you got crazy weather happening. you got signs in the heavens, and you have uh, armies literally surrounding and attacking Israel, trying to annihilate Israel. That tells us the king is about to come. So what do we do? Help our local church, help our local pastor, be engaged. Uh, we don't fit church into our life. It is our life. So we always go back to the word that with all these things physically happening right in front of us, those are signs. We have signs right in the Bible, though, that show us how close we are. Israel made a nation. Jerusalem won back. Hebrew language restored. Ethiopian Jews brought back. Fertility of the land of Israel. Revival of the Roman Empire. You got foxes that started showing up on the Temple Mount. You had fish show up in the Dead Sea. You had the Dead Sea turn blood red where Sodom and Gomorrah was. Crazy on the Day of Atonement. You had the red heifers. I mean, you had the heifers that were shipped over from Texas and their ears weren't clipped because of COVID. They started clipping them again now, but these ones that are there now are the only ones that don't have a flaw. So it's amazing they have to be used between their second and third year and they're right at the second and third year. So that tells me there you got animals in position. You got birds in position. You got 172 different species of predatory birds start showing up on the land. That's absolutely amazing because God calls on them to clean the land up after the Ezekiel 38 war. Seven years later at the Battle of Armageddon, he calls on them again. So you got fish in position. You got foxes in position, birds in position, cows in position. You have the Temple Mount Institute that has everything ready for sacrifices. So these people are all being moved on by God. I mean, you even have Russia went into Crimea, Russia went into Ukraine. All these different groups are, are where they're supposed to be biblically with all these things happening biblically. So what does the church do? Uh, the church goes, is, is Jesus really coming in my lifetime? Uh, Jesus said the generation that sees Israel won back and Jerusalem won back. He said that generation won't pass away till all is fulfilled. So how long is the generation? Lifespan of a man when you're alive. Bible days, 40, 40 years now, 75, 78, something like that. So we're, we're privileged to see all that come to pass. But all of the signs that you have, I mean, with the, with the heavenly stuff, with the earthly things, you have men will be lovers themselves, we have selfie six. You have Ixoc, Ixoc Rabbi, Rabbi Ixoc Kadur, he had prophecy in 2015 that Israel will be ruled by two Benjamins right before the coming of the Lord. Well, right before the coming of the Lord, you had Benjamin Netanyahu and Benjamin Gantz rule Israel. You had the archway for Baal worship got rebuilt in Palmyra. That's where the Tower of Babel is. I mean, radical. The Talmud says that's the last sign you'll see before the coming of the Lord. So you have all these things with the EU. You got all this stuff happening with the Pope calling on one world religion, one world authority, um, uh, literally coming to Islam, trying to get them together. You have Turkey's president say things like, okay, we got to call on the UN so we can annihilate Israel. We have Turkey's president say again, it's time for us to call on Islam and ascend to the Temple Mount and take the Temple Mount from the Jews. So you got verbiage from nations that the Bible says they're going to try to annihilate Israel right here at the very end. So we are so privileged. We're blessed. Jesus said, when you see these things, lift up your heads. Your redemption draws nigh. Now, why would he say that? He doesn't want you sad. He wants you happy. He doesn't want you downtrodden. All these signs and all this information is because he loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to strengthen you. So the signs aren't to scare you. They're to bless you so that you can tell you're about to see the king face to face. Are we ready? 
to see him. Wow. King of kings and Lord of lords. Overcame death, hell, and the grave. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, a greater one than Solomon is here. Man, the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. The brightness of the glory of God. Ezekiel saw him. He said he was a fire from the loins up, fire from the loins down. Habakkuk said he had shafts of light coming out of his side. There was the hiding of his power. Man, we're about to see him as God. The earth will bow down and lift up their hands and say, He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have a blessed week. We'll come back and see what's happened with Israel. Crazy that they're totally surrounded. So we'll see what happens with them. It's amazing how God's protecting them. And it'll be wonderful to see what's coming next for all of us. We're so blessed. We get to live in harvest season right here before we see the game. Have a great week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the end of day's update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the edu and we'll see you next week.